Do you want to go to Duna? Then book with our travel agents. Or you could follow this Duna mission tutorial. Anyway, I'm Orbiter and let's go and engineer a mission to Duna. Okay, so straight into the build and what we have to think of here, what we have to engineer, is a capsule or a spacecraft that can land us on Duna but also bring us back to Kerbin. Because if you remember from my tutorial on engineering rockets, you have to engineer a rocket in reverse. Now you can see I've used the command mod pod mark 3, we got 3 Kerbals, plenty for exploration. I added a heat shield for re-entering the Kerbin's atmosphere, a decoupler and a fuel tank and the poodle engine. Now I'm going to add some radial decouplers and some fuel tanks to that. And don't forget to add the fuel duct. This will give us enough fuel, enough Delta V to return back to Kermit after I do the station correctly. Right, it gives us 3,533. Right, if I'm correct, we need about 1,980 meters per second. Now, I'm not sure where I read it, but I'm sure that NASA times the fuel they require by 1.2. So you're adding 20% extra fuel to your, or Delta V to your mission. And that is to give you that extra margin of error. And that's what I prefer you guys to do if you're starting out at this. Because it gives you that extra fuel, it means that if you mess up here or there, you have that extra fuel to, well, save yourself. Or even add extra, more than that if you want. Anyway, to carry on with the build, we've added some landing legs. I've added extra on this because the gravity on Duna is a lot higher than it is on the man. And this is a larger spacecraft, so having the extra support will help. Now, don't forget the solar panels and the batteries because it is further out from the sun. And I don't think that a puddle engine generates much electricity to recharge your batteries. Right. We're almost finished with this. Now, note when you're adding a ladder to the bottom of this command pod, it seems to go at an angle. See if you extend the ladder is there. If you hold down shift and click on the part, not the rocket, use the part and hold down shift and use the WASD keys, you can rotate it until it's about the right angle. Now, that ladder's not going all the way down, so we'll add an extra ladder to that. And that's perfect. I've tested this out, that design, it works perfectly in for letting the Kerbals down. Yeah, like I'm gonna let them down. <laughs> okay, so next thing, don't forget, we need parachutes for a turn. Now in hindsight, I sh probably should have I put those a bit higher or something, so any re-entry heating won't destroy them, but we'll get back to that on return. Okay, so now the parachutes are placed. We have, and also we have four parachutes on the outer tanks that are helpful landing on Duna. It has a thin atmosphere, so you want to reduce your speed on landing, and the thinner atmosphere means that parachutes aren't as effective on Kirby. And you see a pair of docking port on top of there. That little pot, that little probe on top of there, is a probe that's going to go to Ike, the moon of Duna. Now, you don't have to do this. I did it because, well, I thought, why not? Add a little extra challenge to me. Right, when you're putting the fairing on here now, make sure it's not <laughs> being sliced, not slicing the spacecraft up. So, uh, yep, yeah, we can put those lights inside there and we'll be fine. Yep, yeah, just add the fairing now. And hey, presto. Our pro, our spacecraft is aerodynamically sound. Don't forget to add the fairing because this will help you with the new aerodynamics in this game. Caused me a lot of trouble even in this build. Right, now we're on to the transfer stage. Now I fiddle up with the numbers. I think to transfer to Duna, I'm gonna take 1060 meters per second. Now, times that by 1.2, that needs 1,272 meters per second. And always, is, as always, I add a little extra. Okay. So, what am I doing here? Oh, yes, I'm adding an RCS tank. Now, that's brilliant because we can use the RCS for any fine controls. 
especially look at this because the transfer stage is quite large you can have trouble controlling your rocket so that little extra help to turn your rocket to get your burns on time is perfect and you can also reduce the monopropellant, adjust it to your needs. We don't need 100%. And you see I'm adjusting it, so our delta V is over 1,300 meters per second. That's over our 20% extreme limit we need right now. For the piece of resistance, we need to get this up into orbit. So one orange tank, one half-sized tank of the orange size, the main sail engine, the most powerful of the whole Kerbal engines not including the NASA parts that were added for the Asteroid Redirect mission. You did Asteroid Redirect mission? Should I do a tutorial on that as well? Anyway, we have to get the oomph to get this into orbit. This is no light matter. So what we're going to add is some radial decouplers, the large kind, and some more orange tanks. And I'm trying to think what it is here. I added the mainsail engines here. I wasn't entirely sure whether it should have been the skipper engines, the little less powerful ones, but I think the mainsail ones will give us that oomph. Okay. When doing symmetry, I'm going to do asparagus staging. Set up one pair of rockets, do everything like the struts to make sure it's stable, and even the aerodynamic nose cone. I've decided here that we haven't got enough fuel for this, so we'll add another fuel tank. All right, now let's place them down the bottom. You can place them correctly. Now, select the decoupler, press Alt and click, and you've copied the part. Now we have, there's our four engines for our four ro booster rockets. Now you have to adjust the staging so two of them will stage before the other two. And the first two that can stage before the other two, you want to fuel duct from that rocket to the second one and then from that rocket then you want to go to the inner one and this will give you that ability to transfer fuel between fuel tanks in the arrow that's pointed on the fuel duct and that will enable you to have full fuel tanks when you just when you jettison each stage if you understood that that's asparagus stage it gives you that extra oomph that extra delta v more efficiency Right, um, I've also noted that this may actually get us into orbit, but also it may not. And if I have any experience with this, with this new atmospheric model in the game, then we'll add some extra boosters. And that's what NASA does. You know, if you haven't got the ump, that booster, it'll boost you off the launch pad and help your rocket along. So we're going to add a load of them. I think I had, was it two, four, six, eight? Yes, eight of them. And they're all going to be firing simultaneously. With the interesting thing with solid rocket boosters, they have solid fuel, so you cannot transfer fuel between tanks. And not that NASA or anybody actually transfers fuel between stages. The liquid fuel I'm on about. Right, if you look at the torque on that end Kerbal Engineer Redux mod, you can see you've got high torque. I accidentally put a radial part around a radial part symmetry around a part rather than around the rocket. Oops. Anyway, I've, lucky I found that. Right, now for the last thing. Put some winglets on there. Now they're going to help with the stability of the rocket getting up into orbit. And I think there's only one thing left to do. This rocket is quite tall. It's going to wobble about a bit. In fact, I tried it out. It does wobble about a bit. So if you get this small strut added down the bottom, another one right up to the top part of the rocket. N uh, I think, uh, yeah. Now you get the strut and place it down from the top to the bottom. Now I found that if you do not put it on the side of that hexagonal strut or whatever it's called, I've forgotten the name of it, then you won't get a proper connection. There you go, that's perfect. Now that'll stop the rocket wobbling from top to bottom. I think there's only one thing I do by here. Launch stability enhancers. Actually, there may be another two things. 
I did note that entering the atmosphere of Duner is quite thin. It's so thin that you don't have to worry about uh, thermal re-entry, well, being blown, disintegrating on entry into Duner, unless you're entering at ridiculous speeds. So we have to add some extra parachutes, and I think add in a few extra struts to make sure the lander is secure as well would help. So I've added some parachutes on the outside there. Don't forget to stage those parachutes in the correct places. Yep, that's the stage we need for getting it or deploying the parachutes when we enter the atmosphere of Duna. And last thing but not least, some struts. Just to stabilize this landing stage. Now that means that the entire rocket is has struts going all up and down it, which means it'll be quite secure. But now for the launch. But first thing, let's target our planet. Right, this part you need to know. All the planets are lined up. I'm trying to switch off debris because I have debris left on Duna, which I didn't want you to see, but oh, never mind. Anyway, target Duna, and you see in the flight engineer, we have an intercept angle and a phase angle. The intercept angle is at 247. We need to get that at zero or close to zero. And so a lot of time warping and quite a bit later, we get that down to zero. And you see the phase angle. That phase angle is your angle between Kerbin and Duna, the planet you're going to. And for Duna to get a, an efficient intercept, you need it at 45 degrees. And it looks like all that time warping has brought us into a nighttime launch. Okay, now note, this rocket can be a bit unwieldy. And I had some problems even on this launch. Well, what you have to do is make sure you turn over slightly. Wait until those solid rocket boosters disengage because they're boosting up so fast that your prograde vector is going to go as well, up as possible, as fast as possible. You see a throttle down on the main engines, which is what you want to do. You want all the boost. You don't want to waste the fuel. If you go faster than terminal velocity, you're wasting fuel. So we'll ditch them now that they've run out. And we're still like solidating up. Now we can do our grab turn <laughs> and watch those explosions as they smash into each other on the way down. Should have put some receptrons on them. With this rocket design, this is the disaster I was talking about. I separated while we weren't pointing at the prograde vector. That meant the rockets veered to the side hitting the main rocket. Smash this mirror. See, if you point at the prograde vector, you're fine. You could add Sepatrons to those stages so they separate away from your rocket. I could say I was a bit lazy with that, but uh, what are you going to do? If you do this correctly, you'll be fine. Anyway, getting into orbit, and you see, with our orbital stage, we got into orbit without having to use the transfer stage. And I sometimes find that you get into orbit, well, get close to getting into orbit, but you have to use the stages you intend for something else. But in this case, we were fine. Okay, so, uh, yes, space trash. Just hope one of the other Kerbals don't smash into that orange tank floating in orbit around Kirby. Okay, don't forget to extend the panels at this point before you run out of electricity. I have two extra ones on this Duna probe as well. So might as well extend them. Okay, so now we're ready. I think it's all we have to do is plan our transfer. We're almost close to our intercept angle which is around 45 degrees. There's websites you can do for that. You can also install this Global Engine Redux mod. See here, I'm fast running time to get us that little bit close to that intercept angle. Okay, so now once we're close to that, let's talk about how to do your maneuver node. Right, get your camera angle to point in the direction your planet is going, you're traveling. Add a maneuver node at 45 degrees from the back end of your planet. This is going to have the effect of your planet pulling your spacecraft along. It's like it's a gravity slingshot effect, where the gravity of the planet, the speed of your planet, is pulling you in that direction. You want to make use of that. 
and so then increase your maneuver until you get the close intercept markers. Now, what you can do here, zoom in close and adjust things like the position. Now, if you bring it across a bit, yep, see, you can get, we've got the closest approach. We've got the intercepts and this needs a bit of finagling. You're going to be, don't worry too much about it. Try to get as best as you can. You can always adjust the orbit on your way to Duna. Right, okay, a little bit, a little bit more. And I hate that when the sun's in your way. I wish you could switch things like that off. And we have an intercept. It's quite high at 18 million kilometers. Right, it's good enough. Okay, after the doing the burn. Once you come close to the end, I normally like to close the middle node and do slight burns. Even if it's just little paths until you get what you require, what you're planning for. Right, that's what we need. So, let's get there. And say goodbye to Gurbing. When our three intrepid explorers, Jeb, Bill and Bob, are on their way to Dura. Explore the unknown to find the food planet of Duna. Which I think they, I'm sure they think it's a pizza planet. <laughs> That's what we told them. Right, now we got our orbit around Duna. This is the part we have to add a maneuver. Okay, now if we bring this across, I want that Ike probe to go to Ike. See, we have an intercept with Ike. We also want the spacecraft to go on to Duna. So this maneuver will kill two birds with one stone. Now if we follow this maneuver, get it into the atmosphere, we can get our Ike probe, we can once we get our Ike intercept, we can let go of the probe. Once we get once we release the probe, we can finish the maneuver and get it onto into the Duna's atmosphere. Now I've engineered this probe to re-enter this the lander, sorry. To, re -enter, to enter the atmosphere of Duna and use that as aero braking. And that's what most of the probes, most of the landers that NASA have sent to Mars do. They use the air to slow down from interplanetary speeds, which we're traveling it up, rather into Duna at, at the moment. Okay, little spurts, get ourselves closer to Ike, and we can let go of the Ike probe, which is planning to land on Ike. Hopefully, you know, if you were doing a career mode, you'd want to get as much science as you can. And why not do two parts in one mission? Right, let's undock the Ike probe. Engage the RCS and slide ourselves sideways from the Ike probe because we were missing our maneuver by here. Come on, quickly now, quickly. Going too slow. Yes, perhaps I should have added some RCS thrusters onto the lander as well to help us out. But it doesn't take too long. And there we go, thrust by. And that is amazingly too close. <laughs> We're almost smashing into the side of it, smashing the piles off. Right, now change into the Ike probe. Let's get those radio dishes up and running. And we can remotely control it and land it on Ike. And I find one thing. Well... I've got zero meter per second delta V and no engine. Who the hell in engineered this space probe without an engine? Who's the idiot? When I find out, I'll fire them. Anyway, back to the lander. We've decoupled the transfer stage. We've got a 2000 meter periapsis. I oh, will stick with that. We'll enter the atmosphere and it appears the lander's going to land before the Ike probe gets there. What we can do with the Ike probe is do a flyby mission. Now it's not as thing as a landing, but what you're gonna do, we can't get into landing. Right, now we're going to the atmosphere. Don't forget to close those solar panels. Now I've done this on the, one of the tests. I landed, came down, solar panels open, and they blew off. Yes, they damaged by a little puff of wind. So be careful with them. Anyway, now we're in the atmosphere. It's now just time of waiting for anything to blow up. 
Now, note the speed it was coming at. I think it was 1,500 meters per second. You don't want to come in any faster than that. I think if you do, you risk the possibility of blowing things up. Although, none of the, none of the parts are showing any heat. Heating, the heating... Um, thing, the heating box that shows up on these parts every now and again. When I enter Kirby's atmosphere. Anyway, that's perfect. Now just wait until your surface speed comes down, down under 600 meters per second. Deploy your chutes. I've set some of these parachutes to open fully at 1000 meters above. See in the top right where the altitude terrain is shown from the mod. Now that's coming to 1000. When that hits 1000, I think eight of the parachutes will open up fully. Whoa. Making us lose control. And the other two, I think, are going to open at 500 meters up. I think it's time to deploy the gear, please. Now, at this point, I realize we're coming down at 14.4 meters per second. Now, even with those other parachutes fully open, we're going to be coming down faster than what we need. Uh, than our survivability. And that could damage the bottom rocket. The Kerbals probably will survive. Uh, see 12 meters per second we need to be about five meters per second for a safe landing where your kerbals butts don't hurt so a little bit of rocket thrust doesn't hurt you we have plenty in the stage to return to kirby it takes a lot less delta v to return to kirby than it does to get to duna right don't tip over don't tip over a little bit of a hard landing so once you come down check those landing legs because sometimes they can break, but it looks fine. We're just tilted over because the, we're on an incline. Now to the Ike probe. This was the mission I was hoping would be a success. I was hoping to, to impress you guys. Oh, look, he's landed on Dura and he's landed a probe on Ike as well. And some idiot engineer forgot to burn an engine on the Ike probe. It doesn't take much to get in orbit around Ike, or even, or even land on Ike. There's no atmosphere, so you can't use a parachute. But the Ike probe is leaving. Currently leaving Duna and Ike behind. But the only science to be had is with our team on the planet Duna. Now, I almost forgot. Open the solar panels after you land. Because that's your sole source of power. You do have the RTGs, the radio uh, thermal devices, which, you know, radiation. But, uh, you know, they're a hazard to our Kerbals. We don't want to irradiate them on a mission. But you have to use them when you go further out planets. Anyway, you can see here I've got Jebediah out and he's repacking all the parachutes. Don't forget to do that, especially on these main four of on the outside. Because they're going to be the ones that are going to slow you down on Kirby. Now four is enough for this command pod. You don't need any more. But uh, you know, we repack the other shoots just because, well, it makes it look pretty. And I'm sure those nose cones help with the aerodynamics of when we have to launch from the surface of Duna. Because they, they do contain fuel at the moment. Anyway, now we've landed. Kerbins are so excited, they all want to come out. We all want to have their pictures taken. Look at that sunset in the background. Now, Kerbal Space Pro is one of the most visually stunning games I know. I know it's got sort of like cartoony graphics, but you can add mods to make it look a, that little bit extra, a little bit more spectacular as well. Or even the stock game is brilliant. Anyway, now we've got a plant of flag. And the famous words of Jebediah will be... And what's he write? We couldn't find Duna, so we landed here instead. Now, <laughs> they don't think they've landed on Duna because they think it's a pizza planet. Sorry to disappoint you guys, but this Duna is not a pizza planet. It's a large, huge desert. Right now for Kerbal Selfies. Beep, beep. And and one for the album. 
but now we're ready to return. But uh, guys, it's going to take quite a while. You see the intercept angle. I've targeted Kerbin, and that intercept angle has to get down to zero. That's going to take a while. You can see by the scene showing days rolling by on Dura. All right. Ball angle is 360 degrees, if you didn't know. So we need to get that close to zero. Once that flips over to 360, that goes directly to zero. And you can see the phase angle is has to be minus 75. So with 2,000, well, with 0 0.02 degrees left, I decide, well, it's time to return. They spent years in it. Look at the clock in the top left. One year, 409 days. That's almost two years. And in fact, this mission, if you do it properly, can last up to one hour. If you want to, it can last a long, longer. But what you could do is do multiple missions. You do a mission to do Gurb, Duna, and you do a mission elsewhere. Right, now talking, we're going to, we're launching up. Do a similar launch profile, go straight up, and you see on the Napple, you've got a 90 degree vector we're heading in now always use the north right and set it on the bottom of the apple like i'm doing here it makes it much easier for launching up and then you can tilt right to a normal gravity turn make sure apapsis is over 50 kilometers 57 here ditch those now for those fuel tanks are empty now so we don't need them and do a standard getting into orbit. Symbols, and it takes a lot less delta V on this planet. Right, I do a bit of a mistake here. I get the periapsis to 48 kilometers. Hey, we're not going to drop down too much into the atmosphere to the orbit. Right, now to return back to Kirby. Kirby's targeted. Now, point the camera in the opposite direction of where the planet's pointing. So you're at the front of the planet, basically. Add a maneuver node 45 degrees from the front. And what this is going to do is the planet's going to be pulling you. So you have, it's a gravity breaking, basically, around the cur sun, or as the kerbals call it, kerbal. And this reduces your orbit down, so you can get an intercept with Kirby. And you can see we're closest approach. Now again, a bit more finagling. Try to get the closest approach, and a couple of things you can do here. Because we're at the slight angle from the orbit we got into Duna, I also have to note we landed on the equator of Duna. That helps for getting into an equatorial orbit. Do you get the intercept? Now, because we're close to the ascending node, we can adjust our angle until that's close to zero, or in this case. You can adjust it to zero. Okay, but we still haven't got our closest approach. One thing I do by here is just the node, and we get our intercepts. Nine kilometers. Let's see if we can get that down. Okay, okay, prograde. Yeah, we're getting close. And I do a bit of testing around here, and it was six kilometers, six thousand, six million kilometers where's the closest I can get you can always do a course corrections on the way so again don't forget to deploy those solar panels you don't want to be running out of energy on your way home otherwise you slingshot past urban and you want to intercept any planet after the burn again could go to map view and view your closest approach see you let me know we're thrust in now in the wrong direction so let's point retrograde let's use the computer and there's like the Ike probe in the background there <laughs> traveling into interstellar space not actually still actually orbiting so Okay, so those little spurts are helping us. A little bit more of adjustment. I think we went a bit too far.
and little spirits. Okay, I think that's the closest we're gonna get. So let's do our burn. No, I mean, let's get our way to curving. Now, halfway there, or at least once we get a bit closer to curving, we can do some correction burns. And these correction burns will mean that we can enter the atmosphere from interplanetary space. We have heat shield, so you don't have to worry about killing your Kerbals. Now, this takes a bit of agree you have to find out mess around with the maneuver find out which angle is best and you see that i was having trouble reading the numbers so change your camera angles and you see now we're getting down to 12 kilometers i think that's enough for a re-entry that'll definitely get us back into a landing and that's only taking us 8.5 meters per second so again keep on burning the move note and watch that periapsis and you see i'm not i'm hardly burning the rocket here tiny spurts here you go fine control all right we're into the atmosphere 10 kilometers slightly lower but that'll do we're returning home guys and here we are coming close now be careful i've done this several times i've come in towards curbing traveling at high warp and for some reason you slingshot around curbing rather than the automatic killing once you enter the atmosphere so be careful and just control your time warp when you come to close curbing right we're coming in by here my computer struggles as it changes from interplanetary to entering Kirby. Now look at those speeds and the orbit. We're entering at over 3,400, probably 3,500 meters per second, three and a half kilometers per second, entering the atmosphere at one point. That is crazy speeds. And I prematurely decoupled that there because the atmosphere is going to slow that stage down faster than we are yep okay it means i'm going to have to quickly turn around and quickly orientate back but just in time just as we hit the thermosphere or not thermosphere just as soon as we hit that thermal re-entry and the parachutes aren't overheating Look what it is! Our ladder is taking out enough for it to burn up. In fact, it's going into red. Hold on, guys. Now, I'm sure if that happens in real life, those gerbils would be dead. It's hardly touching our ablator, our heat shield. That was that, no. Okay, yeah. That is our spacecraft being disintegrated in the atmosphere in the background. Fortunately, though, our parachutes are unaffected by this re entry heating. Now, I suppose in real life that would not be the case, but I think, I assume that it's the game thinks that they're protected by the heat shield. So, yeah, that heat shield was enough to re enter us into the atmosphere and. When we come down under 300 meters per second, I can pop those parachutes. So we're in a thicker atmosphere, you need to pop the parachutes at a slow speed, otherwise they could potentially rip off. Now we can switch the SAS off and come down safely. And in fact, let's do a fast forward. You wanna watch this? Okay, so now with our Kerbals coming down safely onto the planet Kerbin, and yes, those parachutes are enough to bring us down safely into the ocean. Where are we going to go next? What planet do you want to go to? Let me know in the comments below and anything else you want me to do. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful or you just want to, click that like button below in the video. Leave any comments you want, ask questions I don't mind answering. And also, if you're not, why not subscribe? Because I'm planning on doing more videos 
included a moon mining base, which will be coming soon once they get everything worked out. And that's it from me. Thank you for watching. I'm Orbita. Trust me, I'm an engineer.